Yo, yo. Hello, hello, everyone. Hopefully you guys can see me. All right, all right say hello, fellas. Uh, let me know if you can see and hear me. Let's test in visuals and sound. I am live. Right on, right on. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> yeah, just getting all the little shit. <laughs> Seriously. Let's see here. Open this up a little bit. So I am learning this as we go. We'll get to the demo here in a second. Yeah. You guys hear the music okay? How is the sound going? Is my voice okay? Get a little bit of an echo. Right on. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> so it's a beautiful day here in Portland. Smooth jazz, lo-fi. Right? <clears throat> digging the slow, digging the chill vibes. Right on. Okay, yeah, I think I got the, uh, the sound in the videos. Um, yeah, let me just give you guys a little quick view of, uh, there's Portland out there. We are in the city, by the way. If you guys don't know me by now, I am, and then back, back there. So that's Canada back there, that's north. And we have to do these streams during the day right now. Yeah, I was debating the blind or not. Because the camera's gonna react to the light. You guys probably like that a little better. Good morning to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are in the world. It is, uh, let's see, it is 12.30 p.m. West Coast. East Coast, 3.30. London is what 8 30 Brussels Paris 9 30 maybe something like that I don't know if anybody in Asia or Australia is on right on thank you cool yeah yeah that is the uh the Weatherly building it is 1950s ish, -ish architecture um it's an interesting story through 2 30 Austin Tech okay yeah. yeah, I'm from LA, G. Living in Portland now. 40 years in, a, in LA. Southern California, born and bred. 5 a.m., Matt? All right. Australia's 5 a.m. That's a baller right there. I like that dude. He's up early. Yeah, this will just be kind of a meet and greet right now. Uh, as you can see, there is a little uh, test turret. Actually, here, I'll swap this around for you guys. Check this out. So this guy here, you'll see a lot of my top of my head. The one thing I haven't f figured out is kind of uh, the camera visuals as I'm doing the thing. So you're gonna see my noodle, I apologize. We'll work that out as I add more cameras over time. But this is the actual turret from 2018, the Belgium video. The BSMC, Belgium Scale Modelers Club. Um, yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, good to see you, bud. Hope you're having a good day out there. Uh, we got friends and family, police, soldiers, everybody. Anybody doing everything for everybody. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, just put some simple lows. Not, nothing special. Put a logo on it, yeah. Yeah, but you guys can see the logos on the stream and everything. It says RS Bench Camera. Uh, add the stream, there's me again. Okay, swapping back. So I'm using StreamYard. Getting a lot of echo on my end. Let me see, I need to lower the mic a little bit. Is that a little better? I was sounding a little loud. Okay, I might be a little quieter right now, but it lets me talk louder. I get excited. Let's see here. So yeah, this turret 
Uh, I'm gonna do some just oils on it soon. But it's the same one that's in that video um, from, I don't know, 2018? What was that, guys? I don't remember. It's the one that's on there, and it's like you can see like my head from the side, and you can't really see anything. So what I've got here is, let's see if you guys can see this here. Put my towel across the lap. So if you guys don't do this, get a, get a shitty towel or something. Put it across your lap because it catches everything and also if you spill or drip anything uh, it won't mess your clothes up it's kind of like a false apron but anyway here let's let's do this you can kind of see so this is what it looks like so i've got the iphone here the turret there and all that so that's what i'm doing super simple here's me <clears throat> all right okay everybody good put them up yeah thank you g yeah i've been wanting to do the streaming for a while see you guys so reading the comments over here I'm trying to you know looking at you guys <laughs> looking at you um, okay hola hola amigo Luis welcome yeah thank you Mike it's been a big deal trying to get to this far I'm, I'm using StreamYard as I mentioned um, got a little Spotify broadcast for the sound is the music too loud or not too loud I don't I can kind of hear it, but I don't know what you guys hear um, yeah welcome everybody Thanks for hanging out today. Uh, this is really just about uh, me making sure this all works <laughs> so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, because one of the things I want to do is, is you can see that that's, you're pretty close. That's about three inches. So one of the things with the videos on the internet was you couldn't see anything. So yeah, but this is, the, that's, actually the, that's actually the oils from, uh, from the demo I did. All this stuff right here. I played with it a little bit last night, just trying to get the camera set up. I've got like five different stands that I've been trying to use to figure out where the camera's gonna go and shit. But. So the main thing is I want you guys to see what I'm doing. The, the criticism of all the demos, and of course I didn't have anything to do with the filming of it, um, is that I really wanted you guys to see the brushwork. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna get into this little guy right here, you know, what we're doing. Because I know you guys are dying to see how that really works up close. So we'll start with oils today. Um, Coming down the road, you know, leave in the comments, please, what you guys want to see on the channel. I have a pretty good idea. Uh, obviously, I've been doing this a little while, but I do want to um, kind of get a vibe of what you guys are into, what you're at, skill sets. Don't be shy. You know, leave, what is it? Is this what I'm supposed to do? Leave in a comment down below. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell me what's going on in terms of what you want to see from me in terms of the techniques and over time. This is day one. This is not the official launch launch. It's kind of a, what do they call this? A, a soft launch in the restaurant business. Um, so I'm gonna really try to give you guys kind of, you know, the lowdown on, on the techniques. But tell me what you're looking for. Uh, I'll come back, after, I'll upload this hopefully tomorrow uh, for the dudes that aren't here live today. And then definitely leave comments as, as well. Um, how I unloaded the brush, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. I wanna get the little nitty gritties and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, it's really gonna be a big deal to kind of get tapped into what you guys really need from me. Uh, that's kind of one of the important. If you remember the Q&A sessions, it, was, it, was, it worked pretty well and this is a way for me to connect a little better. Uh, I wanna cut through a lot of the clutter. And there's a lot on my brain right now. There's a lot going on up here in terms of what I wanna do. Hey, what's up, Barnico? Um, Smash the like button, peeps. Yeah, do the likes, hit the subscribe, uh, share this channel, all that kind of fun stuff. And more, I'll do the whole marketing of YouTube and all that kind of thing. Dude, it's so much work. This is crazy. Um, and it's really kicked me off all the other production stuff. So I've really, I've had to like complete this to get this going. So you guys can see what I'm gonna be doing uh, in terms of the video stuff. And then what I'll do is I'll balance the live streams out with the edited content. So I'll do the whole package, looks like RSP book type video production. That's the hard one to learn. That's one that's been killing me because um, that's a whole different software group. Uh, so from there, you know, what you'll see is probably one to two times a week live stream. And I'll do a live stream at the nighttime for the Asia, Australia, New Zealand, you know, that part of the world guys. So you'll have a better opportunity. I know a couple of you dudes are up in the morning right now. It's pretty early there five or six a.m. in Tokyo, Seoul, you know, Sydney, Perth, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Thailand. Um, 
yeah, I got customers all over the place. So it's pretty cool, but it, there isn't like one magic time spot for everybody. Uh, I chose today, the, the daytime for me because of the daylight does work a little bit better for me. Um, and then hopefully everything, we're getting pretty good light here on the, on the turret, so that's not too bad. Um, and this is kind of a, an in-close uh, deal. So anyway, enough about me. Not yet, Zachary. The schedule is just kind of loose right now. I'm going to probably focus towards the end of the week. If you remember, the Q&As were Friday at noon. Um, that kind of works for me still. That was always a good time for me to do stuff. Uh, figure a couple hours of stream, one to two hours of stream. Um, yeah, we're gonna probably also, so there'll be live streams, there'll be the edited videos, which are just kind of the, the, the beautiful canned content of like me doing like a hairspray demo or something like that. Um, there'll be live streaming of all the techniques, but also what I'll probably do is, I won't dive into product reviews too hard, but I will do reviews of my shit. To be truthful, I think one of the advantages of the channel is to really bring in the books, open it to a certain page, and really start, let's, okay, let's do a demo of this on this page from this book, and we'll go through those kind of motions. Um, yeah, it's gonna be full, Zachary. There's gonna be lots of content. And uh, so I don't really have a posted schedule just yet, and that's gonna be kind of a soft opening, as you will. You know, it's gonna take me a week or two to get my feet under me for how this really works. Uh, how fast do you want me to jump into the I know you guys are probably just waiting you're like whatever dude shut up and paint <laughs> but yeah we'll get we'll get to all that stuff so um, open this up a little bit but what I've got here let me just kind of dive in so we've got the turret which is the demo turret it's gonna be demo turret number two uh, this thing's gonna go through a few paint jobs uh, this is for those I've already had some questions this is it's resin um, Paper Panzer Productions and John, oh, I'm gonna screw your last name up, brother. Uh, from, I believe he's Belgium or Dutch? Uh, don't, don't kill me on that one. Uh, this is, this goes back a while. John handed this in, in Belgium a few years ago. Um, it's got beautiful, let's see here. So the one thing I've learned is the iPhone camera zoom is a little on the slow side. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's got nice cast. You can see, you can see all that. It's all resin. It's, light, it's hollow too, which is pretty slick. I believe E50, E75, Paper Panzer stuff, things like that. Uh, don't quote me on that, guys. I'm a little rusty on my, <laughs> on my E stuff. It's been a while. So, but everybody good? Everybody can see that? Uncle Night Shift, my boy Mark. So yeah, if you, I'm sure if you guys heard Plastic Posse, Scott and the fellas, TJ, uh, John Bonami, thank you. I think that that went up today, uh, the one we just did this weekend. Uh, again, I've been kind of slammed on my end, so I haven't paid too much attention to that. Um, there is a Plastic Posse podcast interview we just did, talking about all the other good stuff. And I won't get into the book stuff too much, unless you guys really, really, you know, uh, want like the nitty gritty dirty stuff as I'm talking. Um, but Scott, thank you again. You've been, you've been a, just a, a great friend on this uh, to help me out. You know, the, the mic I use was Scott's recommendation, Scott Gentry, uh, Plastic Posse. Uh, and I don't have any links up or anything on the, on the videos just yet. This is just really me kind of, you know, put my toe in a little quiet today. I'll put up links and stuff in the future, the descriptions, all that stuff. This is literally just a test session. Um, it looks like the chat works good. Um, okay, plastic went up Wednesday. Today's what, Thursday? So I had internet problems Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which is why I didn't do a live stream on Tuesday, which is what I hoped for. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a, uh, with Adam Wilder, uh, Night, Uncle Night Shift, which is Martin Kovac, Martin Red Kovac, which is what it used to be called. Um, but yeah, with Martin, and then I heard there might even be a special additional guest. I don't know if Volker will be up or not. Uh, I will leave that up to Scott and the boys uh, whenever they contact me. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely do that in the future. And then, um, yeah, uh, Martin, Martin's path is really cool. I can't wait to talk to him because our, our, our paths are very different but kind of similar. Yeah, so much better than Facebook. Dude, don't get me started on Facebook. I, I will tell everybody listening right now, I absolutely hate how Facebook works today. It is brutal. 
Uh, Instagram's way easier, which is weird because they own them. So you'd think they'd figure it out. I'm not a fan of the admin account. It has to be your personal or a separate account to run the fan page, which is not a business page. Super weird. Uh, Instagram's way easier for that. Yeah, Facebook, I'm not, you can see obviously with Facebook, you're really kind of dead for me. Um, but that's also why this channel is gonna be a big deal. Anyway, all right, let's, let's, let's dive in a little bit. So what I've got set up today, let me my glasses on so I can see what's going on. Let's put this zoom back down. Okay, so just a rough setup here. You can see this is just kind of the general desk, microphone, my little keyboard here. Um, so what we got here is your basic color palette. And this is uh, what I've talked about many times where it's your general dirty colors here, uh, rust shades. And you can see from the thumbnail yesterday, the linseed oil has soaked up quite a bit more, which is nice. Uh, I've noticed when I don't use the oils for a period of time, uh, I haven't been doing a lot of painting yet. Um, some of these oils get pretty juicy as they sit in the tube. And so if you're kind of not using your oils all the time, uh, let this palette sit for a day. Uh, I usually say like an hour, you can start working, half hour. If you have to push it, 15, 20 minutes, you know, when, when it was like live demo time, that's a little stressful. I like to give it at least an hour, maybe two or three hours. So set it up, go eat whatever and then come back um, but this looks good you can kind of see it here how it's almost the whole cardboard is, is soaked up the linseed oil and even like some of these colors here like this uh oh, i forget what green this was uh, i still use all the same oils by the way it's all the same tubes oil i don't think i bought an oil paint in five or six years literally the most efficient product ever so what you can see here is everything's kind of set up ready to go this is um let's see i've got the ak's uh thinner this is their odorless thinner uh, and all of them work pretty well. You know, I don't, it don't have to be super brand specific with the odorless centers. Uh, but I do recommend that if you guys aren't familiar with that yet. Let me just make sure. I also got to read. Hey, hey, what's up, Thomas? Um, yeah, doing some guest color labs for sure. Yeah, now you guys, I can tell the chat's quiet because you guys are all focused. <laughs> it's like when the food comes out, everyone gets all quiet. But yeah. So basically, like I said, I've got, this is just general OPR stuff, everyone. Um, just a quick recap. And we can get specifics, add comments, add questions as we go. I'll try to try to check it. Cause sometimes I get in the zone and I'll forget. Uh, I gotta get used to the live stream stuff, but. So yeah, rust tones. You got your similar, I know you can see how I group the colors. And this gets you kind of in a flow. You know, it's important to kind of really uh, feel the stuff in terms of getting in the zone, getting in the rhythm. This is rhythm-based modeling. You wanna sit down for 20, 30, 40 minutes to an hour or two and kinda of really get into this. And that's where it starts to really happen. Usually the first five, 10 minutes of this gets a little bumpy because you're kinda of just you know, getting your feet wet. It's like when you dive in the pool the first time. And that's the same for, for, for you know, hairspray and painting and airbrushing. You know, you kinda of need to, to get, like I haven't practiced today and I, and I should have. Like yesterday I started doing this without you guys, just kind of by myself. And I was like, shit, the camera's wrong. You know, my brush works a little rusty. So, but anyway. So these are your general colors. The thinner's there. So, and, it, and if you'll notice that discoloration, that is double-sided tape. There's double-sided tape under this so that this doesn't move and shift around, uh, which is kind of important when you're trying to dig into the oils. So usually, Usually what I like to do is start a little bit light to dark uh, when I do color applications. Uh, and, and if you guys, uh, while I'm doing this, uh, lay mention to the how you can see is the focus off. All those, I need a little technical shit from you guys because I can't, I can tell sort of, but what I can see on the screen, but. So anyway. Okay, so what I'm so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm loading up with a little bit of oil and a little bit of thinner. Okay, and you guys can see that. Okay, cool. So every time I do this is the unloading one. It's a, it's it's rhythmic, and that's what I'm talking about a little bit. And I'm just doing this to repeat to show you guys. Let's kick this down. One, hold on one sec. There we go. Just a little tighter. It's a little blurry. There it goes. 
Yeah, see the camera's a little slow. It's a great lens, the, it's the iPhone 12 mini. It's a great lens for, for this. It's just the autofocus is slow. That's what I learned yesterday. So, would you, where are we at? Okay, so you can't really see, zoom back out a little bit. So as I go from the thinner, which is up here, to the paper towel, it's just, that stroke, this is really slow. I'm pulling it back like this. And as watch my fingers, I roll it. There's a slight twist. And what that does is that is what I'm doing is I'm I'm automatically fine-tuning that tip. So it's a it's a really it's super subtle. Here I'll do it, I'll kind of over dramatize dramatize it a little bit. So it's loaded up, it's it's really juicy. And so I'm rolling that tip as I pull it back on the paper towel, I'm rolling the paintbrush. Now it's, su it's super easy to control because it's, it's kind of like a like a twist. You just kind of twist your hand. So I'm just trying to get grab a little bit of a light dust color here. And when I do these for real guys, I'll give you all the colors. I'll give you a list of colors. Um, you know, let's see here. You know, I'll pull I'll pull out all the all the tubes of paint and all the little you know like you know give you all. You can see I've used these for a while. And actually, you know why these are so shitty? Let me tell you why these look so crappy. This pisses me off. These fucking things leak all over the place. All... So they're in a little plastic bin and they leak all over each other and they just make a mess on each other. I literally don't touch these things. And they just, I'm like, what happens? It drives me nuts. I'll invent a better oil paint thing one day, guys. Okay, so this is kind of the motions as we're going through. And I'm zoomed out a little bit just so you can kind of see my brushwork. So as I do this, get back in tight here, okay. So let's see, it's a little messy, let's clean that up. Hold on, let me get you some stuff you can see. Yeah, that music's nice, dude. Samurai Champloo, an anime if you've never watched, has the best lo-fi background music, and it really puts me in the group. Okay, so that's kind of a, you can see how it's, 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 see how dry that is? You don't see the sheen of the oil on the brush. This is really important. I'd say probably the single biggest problem most of you have is going to be the how juicy you get the you get the brush. Um, it's, you know, I'm going to spend some time on this with you guys a lot. So if I'm a little slow to apply this, just bear with me if, you, if you're kind of familiar. Because these are the kind of little things I really want to get to you guys. What I'm doing with this brush Let's go back to the hand cam here. Let's see if, I can, let's see if it'll zoom on that. And uh, barely gets it. So there's a focal length on the iPhone camera I'm learning about, by the way. It's killing me. All right, so this little uh, antenna base here, let's. Okay. So it's a matte surface, no varnishes, no clear coats. Uh, I've done nothing but paint this. And those that seen that demo, I don't have to link that somehow. Um, this was just straight airbrush in the show, I believe. I believe I did that live. Um, we'll get into varnishes and clear coat. We'll try. To, we'll, we'll have all that conversation in a little while. But anyway, so I actually draw this in now. So kind of a little dabbing technique, and you can see from the highlight of the lens of the light. You can get kind of a, see what that's, see how it's not bleeding? Yeah, you get right out of that focal length and it, it, it skips out. Yeah, I'll get a new camera pretty soon. I'll do the whole Patreon channel. You guys can help me buy a good camera. Shit's expensive, all this stuff. Okay, so that's just kind of a basic application. And what I'll do usually is, so we have these little guys. A little bit older. Now I'll get into brush details. Uh, also, this is again, this is straight up testing, guys. Um, Samurai Shampoo is awesome, gold. It's one of my favorite animes. Um, but I'll get into all the brushes in the future. This is literally just kind of me figuring this again. Repeat, light repeat. Yeah. Okay. You guys like the angle? Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's a challenge to get the camera set up that's not in my way. 
think I should have seen. I should have recorded. I wish I had like a friend to help me record me trying to do all this. Like the outtakes were pretty brutal. The behind the scenes would be definitely HBO only. Um, okay, so got the oil down. And the beauty of oils, if you don't already know, is you have time. Gosh, it's, it's the best. Now, not that you can't do this with enamels or acrylics. So if you are one of those guys, anything I'm showing you with the brushes is applicable to any other chemical. It's in really understand control and precision, how much is on the brush, how much I'm unloading it. And you'll notice that I do this really frequently when I get into the motion in the zone, I get going and get going. So I'm trying to give you guys the basics as we go. It's been a while since I've chatted with everybody. I usually just talk to myself. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done here is this is the blending brush. Okay, so here let's let's get in. Where's the camera, dude? Okay, so that's that's a juicy one. That's what you don't want. So get all that off there. So we're unloading this completely. One thing you can do to really get these dry is fold that over and wipe that out good. Okay, there's that's what I, I want. When I say almost dry, you see that just a hint of sheen on my thumb? That's what I'm talking about. You don't want any wetter than that. Most of you guys are too wet, so it turns muddy. I'm even trying it again. So what I'm gonna do now, it's coming in here. I'm gonna feather this edge. And it's a stippling motion. And see the whites, this is actually because I've been chatting so long, it's actually here to try it. So I gotta juice it up a little bit more. But that's the beauty of oils. There is a ton of flexibility of this. There it goes, just a, so you can see how wet that, that's actually too wet. So when I talk about control and precision and how much is liquid is going on the surface, when you guys email me or you read in the books, that's actually a little bit too wet for me. Um, let me put, pull this guy out. The magic tool. This is the magic tool. Uh, yeah, I have a hair dryer all the time. I don't know how loud this is. So I'm going to dry it off just a hint. It's not too bad. Yeah, I got myself a new hair dryer recently and it works pretty good. Not that I need it, but yeah, you guys have probably seen a lot of the head. Um. <laughs> Modeling point. Yeah, I did the not safe for work because there'll be some language with this because I slip all the time um, okay cool thank you Scott yeah it feels natural camera works good this is like I said I've been actually doing this uh, probably two three weeks now so I've had the camera for a minute uh, Scott again thank you for the mic I'll, I'll, you know if anybody wants to learn about this stuff I've, I've learned from these guys um, appreciate all the help with that and, and bearing with me it's important that I can show you guys what we're talking about here um, new hair dryer, new camera, Thomas, you got it. Um, camera was 50 bucks. Hair dryer was like 10. So anyway, we have Target here in the US, Target, Walmart, anybody. Uh, as you know, every, I try to do everything white. <laughs> it's like this white suit. And we'll do it behind the scenes too. You guys will trip out on my, uh, my bench setup. It's extremely simple. Um, so I, I do, I focused on that. This is a, if you guys don't know, I know I didn't Scott's thing, Scott knows. Um, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I was, I just use the low setting. So anytime I'm using the hairdryer, it's almost always a low setting. Um, yeah, no, I know. Uh, it is the golden era, right? Is there a better time to be a modeler? Yeah, this is great. I agree. Um, I think if you guys heard that interview I did with Scott, I'm pretty positive. I'm pumped. You can tell I'm excited. I'm chatty all over the place, but we'll focus here. Okay. So I have to redo this again. <laughs> <laughs> Try it on me. Okay, so again, this is the problem. Huge problem. Uh, so much to talk about. So much to get through. Th there's a myth about oil paints that they stay glossy and they stay wet. For those of you new to this, and this is going to be uh, to the Gunpla community, to my to my boys and in in girls in Gundam, which is a, a portion of you, because because we'll 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 get to a, we'll get to a little demo dude here in a minute. Um. I'm gonna cover a lot of bases, but if you're new to this, the oil paints in particular, this palette here up here is critical. Uh, you cannot weather with oil paints in the manner we discuss in terms of, of the overall scale modeling world. 
unless you pull the oil out of the oil paint. I know that sounds a little bit like an oxymoron. There's still some oil in the paint, no matter how much you pull out. And that's, you want that workable pigmenty paste almost. And then what you do is you control everything with the thinner. And again, when I, we're gonna have to really get into this hard. I'm realizing as I'm talking to you guys, cause I haven't actually had a little bit of a face to face. It's a big deal when you get into the conversation about how the thinners really control the oil paint and the use of quantity is huge and you can already see look at this while i've been bullshitting with like that's basically dry that's it it's that simple and there's nothing else like it so i can re-wet it and keep going and blend it out and work with it if i want to if i don't i can keep going and moving on to different colors i can layer stuff up We'll also have conversations about working in sections. We'll get into that. But this is kind of, again, as you know, this is just me. I'm just having a good time today, guys. There's nothing really seriously planned out today. Uh, I don't even know how long I'm going to go. It's already been in half hour and I'm just bullshitting with you. Guys. All right. Which means I probably should get a little serious. It's more fun than I realize. Okay. So let's, let's put some more dust back down. Let's hold on a second here. Let's get these zoomed in. Okay. That actually worked pretty good. All right. I think the phone's learning too. Okay. There is a little bit of a tail shape. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably have to get a stand for the camera to go over the shoulder, the whole thing. I was trying to avoid that, but the table shake's a little annoying. Okay. So, so as you saw, pull, there's oil in the palette. It's a little out of uh, camera focus is because we're focused, but I'm unloading. I'll try to get that in. Yeah, that's, I'm trying to do this a lot to sh so you guys can reinforce as you as you either rewatch the video. This is the stuff you want to look at. Okay, that's that's pretty loaded with oil. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that out. So we're unloading the brush. This is why the paper towel is literally one of the most important things. Okay, now we can come back in here. And I'm kind of going back over where I was. No big deal. It'll rewet some of it. That's not a big, that's not a big problem. Okay, now you wanna blend. So if you remember this little guy, and this is what we call an angle rake. So when you're buying brushes in the store, um, this size here is a, is a one over eight angle rake. So it's fairly small. They, they make them in all various sizes. This is just a good size for what we do and I have a few different ones. Uh, again, we'll talk about brushes in the future. But it's, it's already got thinner on it. Um, that's been slightly evaporated, but there's thinner in the oil. So because there's thinner on that turret already, you don't need to keep adding more. It, it, it defeats the purpose. And that's when you start having all the problems. So I want to diffuse this. I want this to be kind of a, a dusty little corner of the, of the turret. So this is a stippling. This, this tapping motion is called stippling. I know a lot of you guys already know this. I'm trying to talk to everybody across skill levels. So if I'm saying stuff and it's you're like, dude, shut up. I know, I apologize. But I know there's a lot of people that don't know this stuff, uh, which is which is why we're doing this now. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a light color. Let's go in here and let's add a little bit of a darker tone. I'm getting my little turret on the oil palette there. Okay, so I'm wetting a fresh, so I've got a, another brush. So I, I usually work in multiple brushes and I try to keep like, this will be my light tan color this one will probably be a green this one will probably be like a dark brown a little fuzzy on there a little dark brown so i've got multiple brushes those of you who've seen these videos you know i'll have four or five going at once and the reason is you don't you don't want to mix up your colors too much you want to maintain a purity uh, on each brush color let's go back in here dun, dun, dun. get a little darker tones i'm pulling in some dark browns i've got a wet these have been dried out a little bit and the different pigment colors of the oils will dry slightly differently on the palette. Actually, here, I can pull this one back out for you guys. So what I'm trying to do is, is load up the darker colors here. I'm, I'm, I'm wetting these. These little guys kind of start to dry on the exterior, so you have to cut through kind of a little bit of a shell. And this is normal. This is normal what happens to the oils. These palettes will last uh, three to four days. Uh, if you re so what I do is, again, there's so much information. This is brutal. Um, I use a little like, we call them Tupperware, but the little plastic containers. And I, this is actually Ikea. This is my favorite one. It's like, it's like 20 bucks for like a set of 30 of these things. So cool. 
Um, but I put my little oil pallets at the end of the night in there, and so they stay sealed up in there. And that keeps them fairly fresh. You can see here, I've juiced up that. That thing's got a ton of oil. Okay, so we got a lot of... So now I'm just wiping all the oils off. But I've got color on the brush now. Um, and I'm going to probably add... I want to go more... So this is kind of a tan brown shade. I believe this paint is Mission Models, some Japanese zero color. If I remember, my, my brain might be a little rusty. I am getting older. Oops, fumble. Yeah, I do that. But again, easy to wipe off, keep clean. Okay, so okay, this is, and again, I'll get into colors, what these are later. This is just, these are just dark browns. Yeah, nobody cares. Don't worry about it for now. Okay, so when the color is resistant to do, I come in here and you have to kind of cut that, dab that up a little bit. So this is what happens when they dry out a little bit. And this is, again, this is all normal, but you want that because that's when they're really controllable. But you just, there's that minute where you have to work these in a little bit. Okay. There we go. So now in the interior of the oil, I can pick up some color. Okay. So you can see how I twist it. See my fingers are rolling. I'm twisting that out and see how that, I keep that tip really sharp. That's kind of a, a big deal. Yeah, Larry, this is just early days. Uh, there's more to come. This is uh, just a basic test session. Um, hey, what's up, Jim from Charl uh, Charlestown, South Carolina? Boy, it's going to be hotter here than it is there, brother. It's going to be brutal. We're about to have a high pressure zone over the whole entire Pacific Northwest. And to Canada, fuck off. Because your jet stream went Jimmy North. And then we're having this huge, like if you haven't seen the news yet, Portland's probably going to melt, literally. Um, thank you, Andy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been just trying to get to this point. Hey, what's up, TJ? How's my boy doing over there? Michigan, right? Is that right? Michigan? I knew I know where you live, but I, I probably forget. Um, another plastic podcast uh, interviewer. Okay, so we've got some darker browns on this now. A little bit of a rust tone, probably a little bit too, too rusty. I don't want to go too rust. And in the future of live stream, guys, uh, a little bit, I remember I think Adam did the video on the KV-1. I'll do a live stream project for you guys. So what we'll do is over time, it'll be like, you know, episode you know, 15 for whatever stupid model I'm going to do. Uh, and we'll figure it out. Now, I might do several. I might do, you know, for Gunpla guys, uh, military historical. And yes, aircraft is coming. I promise. Um, and then my train boys. Oh, my train boys are in this chat. Whoa, what's up, Moscow? Rosso, Rosso Machin. I hope I'm saying that right. I'll just call you Ross. Because R-O-S-S. We all know who Ross is, right? We're on a break. <laughs> okay. Back to the show. Let's zoom back in. Okay, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the problem is getting the angle on the camera and then me to see this. So I probably look a little tweaked, but anyway. So what you want to do is is just this is just fundamental. Putting the darker color right on that edge. Okay, you guys can barely let me turn this so you can see that a little better. So I've just kind of I'm actually messing that up. It's actually too much. So I'm drawing that in right at that joint. And see how I, we have, the, we have the, the dust color here, and I'm putting a darker tone. Now, I'm not trying to be specific with the colors. Don't get hung up on that. I'm just trying to show you a layered color application. So you're going to want to put in this. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. OK, so <laughs> this is quite similar to a pin wash. But as you can see, it's not capillary action we'll have to have a very heart to heart conversation on this guys. There's a lot here because you guys are probably, most of you are probably looking and going, what the F is he doing? Because you'll notice I, I didn't preface this surface with the pin wash, a filter. All of this happens during OPR. And this is what I really have to, have to start to really convey. And sorry for stopping in between because there's so much to talk about. Um, to really get into what you're seeing me do now is I'm actually applying it as a pin wash. That's what this kind of is. And I'm tinting the surface with the dust. So there's, there's slight filtering going on, but I don't do these in stages now. In other words, I don't filter the whole turret in one color. And then I don't come in with the pin wash over every little detail in a separate step. That's how we used to do that. I used to do that. I know a lot of you guys still do it that way. Um, but you can still take, if you still do it that way, that's totally cool. You can take some of the precision away from what I'm doing here with the brushes and stuff. So, but this is kind of, 
in the vein of a pin wash and getting the shadow in there, I'm darkening that up. But at the same time, I'm also, as moisture collects in the joints of stuff, there is that darker, richer color, and that's what I'm trying to convey in there. So I've applied that in there. So we'll come back in with my little blender again. Actually, let me switch blenders. So I have the flat rakes, that's this guy here. And this size here is the one over four, so it's slightly bigger, but you can see it's, and you can see how I get them a little bit splayed, S-P-L-A-Y-E-D. Uh, that means the bristles have been a little bit bent and, and beat up. I don't know if I have a fresh one over there. Um, so often, yeah, so there's, there, that's a, there you go, that's how sharp it'll get. And this is really useful for a lot of things, you know, when you wanna, when you wanna do stuff like this. And you can see, here, Let's, let's let's show you a little bit. This is just straight thinner, but just to show you why that this is a nice little brush to have. Gotta turn my little chunk on here. Okay. So you can see it just you can do a nice wide, you can and you can turn it to the side and you can nice thin. Yeah. Really have to learn my hand movements and the camera movements for you guys. But I really want you all to see this, so anyway. Okay, so I'm dabbing this off because I want this guy pretty dry. You can see I almost touched the surface. Okay, so we'll come back in here. Checking my, so I always check on my thumb. See how that, my thumb's barely, is not even wet? A little, it's a little glisten, just a hint. That's what you want. Come back in here. And what this does is this'll, this'll kind of soften this up a little bit. And I'm kind of, no, I'll go slow. Really slow. That's my motion. It's a little bit downward and then into the crevice so I'm coming down and then kind of in down and in a little bit and it's and when I when I go when I touch the turret it's kind of a really soft tapping motion and, and don't put your weight into it just use the weight of the brush as a tool don't don't put your out you don't want to be doing a lot of heavy-handedness in fact um, actually here let's see if we do this here so Let's see if my hands, okay, Leah, look at, look at this camera here. Let's swap this over here. You can see my nice little gut. Okay, so I'm pushing down, I'm actually literally pushing down on the table. So use that as your support. Don't use the model as, as a support. Uh, that's kind of one of the things I've noticed. Some guys, you put your weight on the, on the product too much. And what you want to do is I'm actually, I'm leaning into the table and my, and my, my wrists are, are kind of, free if that makes sense a little bit they're really loose but the the weight the weights on here when I'm leaning into it and then and then I'm kind of so don't don't put your weight up into here unless you're really close so for for the purposes of what I'm doing is I kind of lean into my my wrist area so that gives me the control let me switch back you don't want to see my mug Yeah, so Paladin asks, do you generally work from light colors over broad area to dark? Yeah, typically it's easier to go light to dark um, from, from, from a physical aspect of applying the oils. And this is true for most painting. You know, if you're going to paint something, you typically want to go light to dark. Uh, lighter tones have trouble covering up darker colors. That's the main reason. Um, the other side of it is that's how it happens in, in the real world. So what I'm trying to show here... The first thing that happens to all machines basically is they get dusty. Uh, after that, I'm kind of just doing a basic, well, the collection over time is that in that corner, in that crevice, in that joint structure, weld bead, whatever, right around that immediate area is you're going to get darkened up with the grime and the grease because that's going to collect in there, usually from moisture. Since these are exposed outside, you're going to get dew, you're going to get rain over time. And then we're just assuming nobody's washing these things. I'm not worried about that whole side of life. Uh, this is just general context. So that's kind of what I'm doing with that palette. And, and that way you can build it up. And also you can see how it, it doesn't get muddy. You know, it's pretty much, I'm looking on screen here, looking on, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, so I have to clean this up a little bit. This isn't exactly special yet. In fact, you can see the side of that cut. So I'm coming in with a clean brush. I'm just going to clean that part up there because I don't want all the, yeah. So you can see how that's already refined that. And even while doing a demo where I have to talk a lot, 
that just tightened that up a little bit. And I switch brushes to the, the flat rake again. I'm just dabbing that in there. And this is the super subtle stuff. These are the, these are the little things that kind of, I lose my train of thought as I start. See, now I'm kind of getting, now I can tell. When I get quiet, that means I'm starting to get in the zone. So, so yeah, you're getting a bit of sunlight on this too. Yeah. So that's just basically showing you a darker application on top of a lighter application. One of the other little, let's do a little speckling because that's always a fun thing. It's super easy. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so if you're going to do a, what I and, and what I what I do is I'm I'm putting down kind of light colors and putting down some dark colors. I start speckling pretty early in the process, and what I mean by that is I I want to put down on that turret surface just little spots and stains. Uh, just general bullshit that happens. If you look at any, I keep looking outside. So I see rigs going by all day long. Uh, where we're at is a big thoroughfare. And I can look down on the tops of container trucks, which are coming out of the, the river shipping boat area. And the tops of these are just covered with stuff. And they're just little spots and stains because what happens is the paint fades, oxidizes, gets dusty. Then you get drops of fluid on it, whether it's oil or soda from you know the operator spilling stuff from their lunch. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it, they leave little imperfections on the paint. And this is one of the things they're really trying to capture. And I give credit to Adam for coining the term speckling because I used to call it flicking, you know, flicking with the, with the brush. But anyway, this is a this is a great little. So I load up a little bit thinner. You can see there's actually quite a bit in there. So let's re I'm going to reload this with some color, kind of a medium brown tone. Yeah. So then I get a little bit of juicy action. You can't really see that anymore. There you go. That's a little bit juicy. Okay. So now what I do is a little bit like dry brushing. You want to really start unloading this brush. Some of you guys flick this too wet. So let, me, let me do this on the paper towel first. So I get a, like something to flick against. This is just an old tweezer. Let's see if we can get some spots. And you can see these things. Okay, so let's, let's see here. Let's see if I get the, there it goes. Sorry about that. You can see how small those little specks are. It's kind of in the edge of the camera view. That's that's obviously way too much, but you can see that. You can see the size of those. And that's a really nice little and see how close I am to the surface? I'm probably it's like a centimeter. So then we can do so that's kind of prepped. It's, it's the same concept of unloading the brush. You wanna, you wanna juice it up, get the color in it, reload it with thinner a little bit, go back and forth, kinda get it right, and then flick it on the paper towel to kinda unload it to a point where the, the spots are giving you what you need. Okay. So there you go, okay. And these you don't wanna touch. You wanna put them down and leave them down. I'm kind of just getting a random little speckling. So you got some various sizes and stuff in there. And then what I'll do, let's hit this with the hairdryer again. Set this up. So I usually when I'm, because I'm talking a lot, it's hard to kind of remember all the steps all the time. I'm doing this off camera a little bit, but. Okay. Goes pretty quick. Put that back over there and put this guy back. Okay, so you can see these are kind of dried out. And there's a little bit of a, tide mark on that one that means they're probably a little bit too juicy but that's no big deal because this is just layered but you can just see real quick if you eliminate all the talking <laughs> that was probably about 20 to 30 seconds worth of work truthfully so um. <laughs> thank you Larry yeah I'm, I'm, I've been trying to get to this point of and I know again this is trust me this is just me fucking around um, really want to get into kind of a, a structure where I can explain these techniques a, a lot more one-to-one -one with you guys so that you guys can really see when I talk about because when I say small or tiny or control or precise it does vary across planet earth so um, that's one of the things I really want to get across to you guys uh, as as we keep going Th again this is this is just early early days of me messing around here yeah we've already been on for a good hour so that's no problem you can see that goes fast 
Okay, so let's 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 go a little bit extreme. So you can see that's actually that doesn't look half bad. I mean, I'd be okay with that. So I'm going through the the loading unloading process. See, I probably almost need like a th I almost need like a third camera, kind of an overview camera, so you can see everything. Then a really tight close up. I think I can do that, but I need to buy one. So we'll, we'll get to that. I did pick one out, so I think it's going to be I I'm was going to try to do a DSLR shoot. A lot of the problems with DSLRs, first off, they're expensive, but the ones that autofocus properly are even more expensive. Um, so I had to back off of that plan, but there's there's another one. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll, I might have even up to four cameras because a good overview, especially for airbrushing, hairspray, I'm gonna need a bigger you know, viewing thing. Um, and then have a hand cam like this, which I think works pretty well. But I can only switch from these two views. That's literally all I got. So. Just working with it. Let me, let's see if I can put a little bit more light over there. My head's gonna glow a little bit, sorry. I hope you don't mind my bald head. Usually I wear a hat, but it's it's a little bit tough with the eyeglasses to so let's get some let's see one here. I was gonna go darker on this. Let's let's juice this up. Okay, let's put on some of the and I believe this color is so my three mainstays, this has been the same three tones, same tubes for 15 years now. That's how long they last. So Burnt Sienna, uh, Windsor Newton, best rust color still. Uh, this is similar to many other colors, but the, is it raw? Yeah, raw umber is kind of a really good overall dark brown. And I believe it's, is it, wait a minute. I have to look at these straight up. No, okay, it's, it's Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is your, your, your traditional dark brown dirt. Um, that one I use a lot for blending into other colors. But raw umber, um, this guy is is your really uh, let's see. so that's almost a black brown. That is, I think 502 makes it as engine grease. Um, it's one of the best. Like these three: burnt sienna, burnt umber, and raw umber. Everybody should have those, including you, Gumpla. Get you guys up to speed soon too. All right. Yeah. See the camera shake of the table shake, all that stuff. Anyway, okay, so load that up there. So I want to kind of intensify like this little area right there. So what I'm trying to do now is I've, we're going to layer this in. And, and what I want you guys to see is this doesn't happen all at once. It's, it's really important to understand as you blend stuff out, sometimes you're going to lose it. So you have to go back in and kind of reinforce it again. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of controlling this here. I want to get kind of a, not really a streak out of there because it's a flat surface. I'm trying to keep trying to keep everything on camera. It's a lot for little me to remember. So there you can kind of see the let's see there. Yeah, so that's what it kind of looks like as the oil's on the surface. So what you like to do is hit hit it with the hairdryer fast. Don't wait. So what this what that does now Boom. So it's kind of, it's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm, that's not my best job. But I was just trying to show you. See how you can still see the dust? You're still seeing the speckling. Now I've added a, a, even more whatever, you know, dirty, grimy spot to that little area is. And that's kind of what I'm talking about where you can see, even on camera, that's, that's a, uh, yeah, let's get that in there pretty good. Rotate this one. So the, the oil palette's taped down, it keeps blocking the turret. That shows it from that way. So yeah, that's not too bad. And that's just kind of, you know, quickly showing you guys that it doesn't get muddy. When you, when you control the thinner, so let's clean it. So I keep getting, 
right on that little edge right up there that vertical keeps picking up extra oil and that's partly because it's clumsy for me to do it this way uh, I'm not seeing that ledge so let's come in here pull that over a little bit okay so let's so this happens so say you guys do this and you get this to come in here this is a clean fresh brush with a little bit thinner and just wipe that back So that cleaned up that edge a little bit. So that little ledge of that antenna base. So now there's just the kind of grime in that little thing here. Let's pull some of this out here. Say for whatever reason, maybe the vehicle is parked at an angle and this started to flow out. So you can see what I do with the streaks. Again, hit it with the hair dryer. That's just adding a little special effect. No, that's not realistic or anything. I'm just showing you and just fucking around. But you can kind of see right away how quickly that happens. And there's no tide marks. So to the conversation about tide marks and, and everything going on with that, um, this is just a quick intro. Uh, I, I could go on for hours. <laughs> I probably should. But yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take long, Gary. Um, really, really quickly just shows you guys. But these are... Uh, so, so Mike has asked, uh, the mic's everywhere, mic's all over the place. Uh, these are the Loa, 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 I, I say Loa Cornell. I do believe these are out of production. So these are actually a synthetic watercolor brush, I believe is what they're marketed as or what category they're put into. So no, I don't use sables. Um, one, they just get messed up with this kind of work. You know, you really want your sables. I'm looking at my little brush rack over here. Hold on one second. Let me grab this guy's so one. Let's get some various, I know I have some sables in here. There we go. I think that's a sable, is that a Kalinske? Oh, it's beat up, poor dude. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I don't even have a lot of, cause I don't do a lot of figure painting, <laughs> like ever. Can't even remember the last time I did a figure. Um, yeah, no, most of the brushes I use are, are, when you buy them, they typically say like oil or watercolor synthetic. Uh, sable, save those for your good hand painting work um, and, and treat those nice. There are products on the market to keep these going well. And a lot of these brushes I have have been around a while. Some I pulled a couple new ones out. Um, somebody, okay, we'll get to this soon, I promise, maybe even the next stream, uh, with because tool, tools are important. Uh, actually, let me spend a second going on just general tools uh, besides the oil paint tools. So what we have here, because some of you guys aren't familiar with these things yet. Uh, the Gunplot community, you are though. You guys are ballers. Okay, if you guys are not familiar with, um, you need a really good set of, of single side nippers. A uh, company in Florida uh, for the Gunplot community called USA Gundam Store makes their own. You guys are probably familiar with obviously Tamiya nippers or Tamiya, however you want to say them. Uh, and then God hands, of course. Uh, those of you uh, pulling parts off sprues, I've broken two God hand pairs, so I don't use them anymore. But these, these USA Gundam store ones are about 30 bones, uh, which is a good price. And they hold up and they snip the parts off beautifully. Uh, and then I've learned to use these. A, this is a glass file. Again, this one's branded by, I don't know if you guys can, let me, let me put this down here. Yeah, there we go. USA Gun Store. So this is called the Razor. The company company Gun Primer is out of Korea. Uh, if you don't know who Gun Primer is yet, guys, especially in the military side, if you haven't seen their stuff yet, dude, they make a ton of tools that are just crazy. And you've probably heard about the Spay. They do a lot of good stuff too. But Gun Primer out of Korea does some really nice stuff. This is a glass file. Let's see, I'm looking at this, yeah. So glass files are kind of a newer thing for us. Uh, I learned about this about a, about a year ago. So when you cut the parts off the the sprue, you have the little nub left, which is why you have good nippers, because you want that nub controlled. But this glass file cleans it up. And, and let's see here. Actually, here, let's do this. So pretend pretend this little edge was a nub. Let's clip some of that off. So you clip, you clip your part out. And just like a sanding file, let's, see, let's do this on screen. 
And what they're pretending that was a nub, it, it'll it'll clean that it'll clean that up right away. And and that's and, and what it does is it, it kind of polishes the surface. And this is all pre-paint stuff. Um, these are some newer stuff. If you guys aren't familiar, get the glass files, gun primer, great stuff. Um, and then there's the newer sanding stuff. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the, the carbon fiber sanding sticks, these are money. Um, what you do is you get your little you get a little piece of your sticky sandpaper. Put that on the carbon fiber. There's also the plastic acrylic plastic ones, and this one has tells me what number because I forget all the time. Um, you know, blue 600, whatever. These are great little tool sets. Uh, let's see, tweet. I don't use much. Oh, I've switched. Another big change for me. Not a big change, but so old school went from exacto knife to this kind of to me a style modeling knife. Uh, the little shorter blade here. Uh, I found this is a little bit more controllable. I picked this up from other dudes, especially the Gunplug guys. So this is the old school X-Acto knife. Been using those for years, 20 years. But I switched to this guy now. A little bit easier to control. I have a little bit better time with it, I must admit. They work pretty good. Um, that's it for the tools for me. I don't really mess around. I don't have a lot of other stuff. I spend most of my time on the painting. And we'll get to airbrushing and stuff like that. Um, best Thursday night UK for a long time. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you, Gary. Um, different grades, different grades of, what are you referring to? Um, let's see, this is Model University, <laughs> but they're not deserved. You guys deserve it. Don't worry about it, brother. No, no, this is, this is, this is again, thank you for coming in. I'll wrap it up here. Um, put in the comments what you guys want to see in the future, please. And then we'll get to those things over time. I have, again, I have a really good idea too, but kind of expect a little bit of a, ooh. I couldn't hold on a sec here. We're not done. Hold, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, kids. Oh, the glass files. Okay, thank you, Gary. Um, I don't think they're actually marked as a grade, as, as terms of a, a grit grade. Um, the reason the gun primer, you can get these on Amazon. I do know glass files. Um, I think they come from the manicure industry, makeup, you know, whatever you want to call that, um, as do a lot of the little precise sanding stuff do. The grade of this isn't really used for sanding. It's really a cleanup tool. So the other sanding stuff you're going to want to use for your regular sanding stuff is still graded paper, just like, you know. And of course, we all know like metal grade is a little bit different than some of the sandpaper grades and some of the sponge grades. If you guys don't know about these already, this is uh, Infini. These guys are money. Uh, I've, been look I've been going through sanding sponges for about 20 years. Usually when you go to the hobby store, uh, I don't even think I have any out anymore. They look like the nail files, the, the nail sponges. Uh, most hobby shops I have on the counter. You know, when you're buying stuff, I always was like, buy two or three every time. I always have more. But the sanding files, uh, the glass file stuff, Gary, uh, the rest of you, is this is a hard plastic that, that doesn't dull over, t over time. Um, and again, you just use it for that. So you clip the parts off the sprue, and then you clean the nub up, and it's perfect. And you can roll. And, you, and when you get going fast, you can go really fast with it. Uh, you don't use this for sanding anything for much. Uh, that's what you save all the other stuff for. But this was just kind of a part cleanup conversation. Uh, better nippers today. Because if you guys remember, well, the Zeron days, if you guys are probably still using them, I have old Zerons too. So there's the old Tamiya nippers. There's the expensive Tamiya nippers. There's God Hand nippers. Um, and now there's a bunch of these kind of guys here. Uh, USA Gundam Store. These are really nice. I just, it's a good spring. It's a good clip. I, I'm a big fan. And if you don't, and it's slightly sponsored because I do work with them uh, in terms of, uh, you know, they're more in the Gunplug community, but we have been closely, you know, uh, in contact with the USA Gundam store. They have a whole line of tools coming up. And for the, for the Gundam kids out there, the rewind button. <laughs> so this is a part separator in the, in the Gunplug world. So these tank guys out there, armor dudes, I'm like, all my fellas over there. Let's pull some, let's pull some of this stuff out. Okay, let's make my little Gundam leg. So in this, in this world, none of this is glued. Beautiful, Bandai's amazing. Um, this was a Hornet Hobby test piece. There you go, here's, here's, here's an old throwback. Painted this at Hornet Hobbies. So let's throw this down here. So say you want to, I'm gonna shift gears on you guys real quick. But anyway, the, this is the part separator. What you do is you're gonna, you're gonna put, this, you, you put this in between and you use it basically what it is. You just separate the parts up because what you do is you, what they call snapping these up because they don't glue them. These are all in that old vernacular. It's a snap tight kit. 
Uh, in the modern conversation, uh, it's much more sophisticated and they're very precise. Bandai is amazing. Even makes Tamiya look a little shoddy sometimes. You're like, wow. Um, so they have these other tools to, because then they have to paint them. So you snap them up together and then you unsnap them and then you paint all the parts separately. And this helps you control your color because they do a lot of different color schemes and stuff like that. But anyway, that's what they do. So we'll talk about that stuff later too. But that's the, I call it the rewind button. Because a lot of times you'll fuck up and you're like, oh shit, I need to put this, pull this part in this little guy. Works great. But anyway, so, so say you got a color like this and you want to, maybe it's all paneled up a little bit and you want to do some tinting. You want to you want to just basically shift the tone of this panel right here. Uh, real quick, because I've got all the colors out. Let's see here, I can use that brush. Okay. Well, I've got you captured audience. All right. So say that's a kind of an orangey color. Say I want to lighten that up to more of a yellowy tone. So let's, let's pull in some yellow on this guy. Let me actually get a hint of green. So I'm little, let me let me go back. Sorry about that. Okay, you can kind of see. So I'm over here doing this, and see how I've got kind of a lemony, yellowy, limey color here a little bit. And it's a little bit wet and juicy. Okay, so I'm back over here unloading. Notice still twisting, keep it keeping the. Gosh, it's so hard to remember where the camera's at. Now I can tell with the first dab if I have enough color on there, like I didn't have enough oil on the on the brush. So I load it up again. And this is the beauty of oil paint. This is this is the nitty gritty right here, guys. So this is technically a filter. And see how I'm just kinda and it's not super pretty. I'm not I'm not really worried about it because I'm gonna diffuse this. I'm just kind of applying that color. Just kind of dabbing this on. This is nothing fancy. Okay. Now I'm stippling it again. So you can see now, I've instantly already tinted that edge a little bit. And this is in that vernacular of what we talk about with color modulation and some other stuff. But I'm able to control almost immediately the tint of that thing. Now say I wanted to go a little, whoops, sorry. So much stuff in my way. <laughs> so hard to work, yeah. Okay. Keep shaking the table too. Okay. So say I want to go a little bit more green though. Say I want to get a little bit of a green tint to this orange. And we'll get into to warm and cool colors too, and color theory and stuff like that as we go. But this is just, see how dry that is? Look at that. See that you just catch just a hair of the sheen. That's almost pure oil. That's because I'm, I'm, I'm loading it up on the palette. I'm unloading on here. And you can even see, let's see if I can get that up over. See how dry that brush is? And this is there you go. That's important. See how the bristles here, see how dry they look? that's just a slightly moistened oil paint on there and that's when i apply it to the model see how control see how I can, it's not muddy it's not bleeding it doesn't bleed into the yellow that keeps the color separated a little bit and this guy here is basically dry now even though it's been with thinner all, all afternoon it's basically a dry brush but there's enough thinner on there just to blend that out i'm actually waiting almost a hair too long but that that there there you go. That's money. That's the kind of subtlety that oil paints really. So it's just a slightly cooler tone. So say that's what's going on. And I'm just going to push the extremes a little bit here. I probably wouldn't normally do this, but I've got some red down here with some orange. I'm going to grab a little bit of rust because that's a darker orange basically with the red here. Let me zoom back out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that little where my finger's pointing on the model. Okay. So I'm unloading. See how I draw it out? I twist it. So I get a nice sharp point. Okay. Zoom back in. I'm going to talk my way through this. 
Okay. So let's take this edge here, just draw along that. You can even go a little bit darker. You know, we talk about panel separation and some other stuff. You can have a base color down. And to all those that love to appreciate and all this stuff, you're going to hate me. Because <laughs> there you can kind of see. Now see how that didn't blend the best? It's okay. Clean this brush up a little bit. Come back in here. Dab that a little bit more. Soften that up. So that's see how wet. See now you can see how wet that is. That's because I want to push that blend out. It was too strong of a contrast. But once you do that, come back in, pop the hair dryer. Boom, two seconds. Come back. So now you can see I'm still getting a little bit of a lip there on that red. I want to soften that. I want to soften this up a little bit. Just kicking that down a little bit. But it's just enough of a color shift. I don't you don't need to just blow dry that. There we go. That's a little better. And that's without even hitting the panels yet, the, the panel lines yet, in between these panels here. So that's just a quick how to how to color shift adjacent panels like that with oil paints. Super easy. Now, I probably wouldn't do this for real life. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to show you technique more than anything. And that's what this was. It's kind of a full technique guy. It's actually kind of ugly. It's gonna get repainted. That might be a, that might be one of the YouTube's uh, the, the live streams. We might re this is a GPO4. It's the Bandai RE100 kit. Uh, it's kind of old and beat up. It's got a lot of travel miles on it. It went to I think this went to Mosin with me, 2017. So and it came back a few times. So yeah, yeah. So Mike Mike asked. So the tip of this dude. <laughs> It helps. It helps to beat up some of these brand new brand new brushes. Sometimes are a little rough uh, for this kind of work. So hold on here. Where was, I saw one earlier. Oh yeah, here's an old one, dude. Check this out. All right, dude. Here's the original. So this little Jimmy Jam, I cut that dude. That's the dude I use in the hairspray videos in the books for, I don't know, ten years now, twelve years. That's the exact brush. It's good to see him still hanging out. He hasn't left me yet. Uh, let's see here. Where was that? Uh, Shoot, shoot, where was it? Just, here we go. Okay, so this is actually a Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo, show your brand new brush, never used. So when they're like this, the brand new bristles, Jimmy Jams, got your Jimmy Jams. Um, oh, did the, yeah, here. You know, sometimes this, this whole Spotify thing, uh, the background, I guess it ended. All right, so I've been talking too long. Okay, so we have, let's see if we can do this here. Yeah. So this is a flat rake here. That's what we call a flat rake. This is, let's see if they get the size on this one. Okay, so Vallejo doesn't actually give you the, the, the common brush size. It's just a bunch of codes. Like a prisoner barcode shit. Okay, so let's get into focus. So here we go. Okay, so yeah, so fresh brush, old brush. So with this guy here, it's good for really precise work right now. And then over time, it'll start to splay out and get bent like this. And these you put aside, and, and this guy here is actually really, really soft. So you do have to kind of make, you do have to kind of make some of these. It doesn't take a long time. Like you can probably do this in a night of just beating these up a little bit where you just kind of squish the brush down a little bit and it'll bend almost immediately. Um, but you're going to want to have a handful of old and new brushes and, and, and scale modeling does have happen like this. Like there's no instant, uh, with brushes in particular, you have to kind of develop your, your repertoire of brushes over time. So yeah, you want to have a few that are really soft like this because that little soft bristle right there really, really helps me kind of, you know, diffuse, um, you know, to get, to get these kind of, it's a little bit of a softer breakup tones. So say you came back and you, you got that streak a little bit. That one streak's a little on the strong side. Now let's take this guy. So I've got, let's, let's see here. I keep forgetting which camera does what. Okay, so there's, there's the, you can see the oils, the thinner starting to tint out. That's okay. That doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so I'm just getting a like a flat rake here. 
So say that one spot here on the turret, this guy here, that little one streak, maybe that one streak bothers you a little bit. You know, it's a little bit strong, personally. So it's been a few minutes. So there he goes, just kind of, and just kind of cut that down a little bit so it's diffused a little bit. And this is what I see on your guys' work, so this is important. Some of you guys leave your streaks on there, and the streak ends a little too abruptly. There you go, that's it. See how subtle that is now? And I'm looking, I'm looking right here at this guy, and then that one there. And, and that's kind of, a, that's the camera picked that up pretty well. You can just see it, it's just a hint. And when you get just a hint, what happens is the viewer then pulls into the model. And that means if it's a judge, or if it's online or whatever, that's where you start to get the really beautiful little shifting of stuff where guys are going to do, what are you doing? What'd you do there? Like all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff you really come to see. I did that 20 minutes ago and I came back and I said, you know, I looked at that. So you have to evaluate yourself a little bit. And a lot of that comes with experience. If you're new to this, you, you know, this will grow on you over time and don't expect this to happen overnight, fellas, boys and girls. <laughs> this, none of this happens overnight. I was thinking about that when I was, when I was setting this up. I was like, it took me about six to maybe eight years with still photography to get all the stuff down for the books. So to learn the video stuff, like I know, dude, I'm going to fumble with this for a little while, but same thing with the weathering. If you keep at it, consistent results will happen. That's the biggest, that's the biggest takeaway. But you can see there, that's a, that's actually a nice little, I'm just getting a hint of that streak pulled out. Like that was an old rainstorm that came in and, and maybe the, the tank was parked at an angle. I love, I got the old dust work there. But that does, that's no big deal, because I could I can come back in. Let me get the red out of there. Wipe that out. And when you finish with the oil paints every session, you do want to clean your brushes up. So you do want to spend five, 10 minutes after every session cleaning your brushes real good. Get all the oils out of there. Let's turn this dude around this way. So just me drawing a little bit of the dark oil in there. It's so nice when I shut up too, right? So that little panel line there, so that's that's too much for, for your pin wash. Can you hit those guys? And the other thing is, stop hitting every single bolt the same way, guys. This, it's one of the things you, I want you guys to start focusing on is intentionally add asymmetry to your work. It, it, it'll create an artificial randomness, but in, in, in situations like this where you have all these bolt details around, they don't all have to be hit with the same pin wash. One of the probably the biggest criticisms I would have as a community is, is this constant adherence to the pin wash in particular has to be the same all over the entire vehicle, aircraft, robot, whatever it is. That's not the case. It's not the case out there and it doesn't have to be the case in here. So really embrace that part of things where stop yourself almost. So I've, I've got that pin wash all around you can even see that you can see that there's gonna be tide marks and stuff there so start blending that out I keep talking I'm getting myself in trouble I'm gonna blend that guy a little bit too so I often use really sharp brushes for blending too see I'm kind of just jiggling that that tip around a little bit So the other little thing, little pro tip, work small, small mistakes, easy to fix. So what I've done now is I've kind of, so you can see kind of there's the sheen, but see how nothing's bleeding, see how there's no hard edges to that, there's no tide marks that are gonna happen from that. A quick blast for the hair dryer. Oh, boom, done. Now typically, so y'all don't think the worst of me, I don't handle the models this way. I don't physically touch them like this. So when I'm working, working, um, okay, let's see here. 
Let's do it really quickly. Let me take this guy off here. Okay, so what I'm working, there's the head, sir. Let's focus your piece of shit. There we go. So these little guys here, this is an OXO brand one, but you can find these at, at most like, uh, you know, it's Target in the US, Walmart. Um, I usually have everything on those things. You can kind of see the bench. That's that's about it, my friends. A little bit of a brush stack over there. Me. And this here is kind of my, you know, the get the glue thing. That's in a little non So I put like a triple. How many times have you spilled the glue, everyone? That thing is in the corner of that thing. It's not going anywhere. I don't spill glue anymore. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of. Yeah, it actually works pretty good. Um, it's a good little camera. <clears throat> yeah, that's the that's the Hetzer from the Mosin one. I'm probably gonna do some camo work on it. We'll use it for some airbrush stuff. Uh, this turret will be repainted. You can see the, the yeah, we'll, we'll have the mission model spin conversation. I know you guys are dying on that one too. Get a little, get a little ugly, get, get a little controversial. Uh, we'll have the lacquer versus acrylic conversation. Um, and that'll be kind of a fresh voice because there's so many lacquer paints out now, especially in the Gunplot community. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit of a heart to heart. But yeah, we're gonna get into all that kind of stuff. But yeah, let's. Okay, I'm just fucking around now. But thank you guys for for swinging by today. A um, couple things I need to learn. Uh, the 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 reminder thing. I'm trying to figure that out. I, I it seems like it worked okay. The the reminder on the screen on the thing. If you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, which is also a thank you, I believe that reminder pops up. I hope it does. I know it does for me when I watch other channels. So I'm trying to figure out the reminder. I also have to do a countdown. <laughs> Dude, making a countdown timer? You should have seen me yesterday trying to make a countdown timer. That countdown timer was just uh, the stream yards. They give you a 30 second like freebie. You have to pay for countdown timers. Um, so I have to figure that out. A lot of my graphic design, um, software all that good stuff i'm mostly print based so a lot of the digital stuff adobe premiere adobe spark uh, obs canva a couple a lot of these are like paid for services i already pay a lot of money to adobe so i'm trying not to pay for more services everything's a fucking subscription um so yeah i'm a therapist what's up guys this is Taz. sorry bud um yeah, we're doing a little bit of uh, oil paint work. I know I'll, I'll do a little, I'll keep going for a little bit more. Are you guys okay on time? It's two o'clock. What do you say, another 30 minutes? Um, yeah, nice seeing you. Uh, Freshwater Spaceman. Some of you dudes, I have no idea who you are, but I probably know you. Um, onwards and upwards. Thank you, brother. Yeah, we're getting there. This is, again, this is just me. I'm farting around right now. Uh, I'll put the stream up so those that missed it can see it later but if you want to go back through and if you want to stop and pause on some of the points where this is important again we will do real stuff down the road do not worry please i i will handle all you guys get you get you covered we'll have a conversation about why you don't use real black you know oh yeah let's let's do a little blue So I'm trying to get myself a really nice little dark paneling color for this guy. <laughs> this thing is, this this robot went to Mosin too. You can see in, in, it's got little hot spots from, all those little white is the plastic. And that's rubbed through. That's beautiful chipping, look at that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. So let's... So sometimes what happens is it's hard to see in that crack a little bit. I'm trying to angle that so you guys can see that. It's a fairly large panel iron. This isn't the best of kits. It's an older Bandai kit. Sorry for the table shake too. If the camera shakes a little bit, I apologize for that. So if this being a Gunpla, to those of you that are Gunpla modelers, notice how I'm handling my panel iron. See how there's a, there's a slight randomness to it? It's not super straight and even across. When we get into the weathering conversation for you Gunpla guys, especially if you're a clean builder, 
trying to, and the same what I was doing with the armor guys, is, is, is try not to make every panel line look the same when we're talking about weathering builds. And Gunpla modelers will know what I'm talking about in terms of referencing that. Armor guy's like, dude, what's he doing? Don't sweat that. Everybody's welcome here. So I'm just kind of dabbing that out a little bit. But you can see that's a little juicy on that edge. It got a little too much thinner on that. I am a little rusty. I will admit, I'm a slightly rusty with this. I haven't done demo work in a long time. But that's why I wanted to. So anytime you do get a little overrun, um, while I'm off screen here. So it's, you can see there, it's a little wet through that major pan line. Kick that down a little bit with the hairdryer. This will just evaporate it out faster. Oops, there's a high spot. So that brings your controllability back down. So what happens is when you instantly get too much thinner, you have to, you have to deal with it and pull that off. So, um, it's important to remember that the thinner is what you control all the oils with. Everything's everything is is like a volume knob with the thinner. So instantly when it goes up to 10, you're in trouble. You want your thinners down at like volume one, volume two, most of the time. Because that's where your, your best blending will happen without it being muddy. So yeah, see there's, there's too much thinner in there. And I lost some of the I lost some of the yellow that I had over there, which is not the end of the world. Where did I put that guy? Yeah, I this one. So say that happens, because you have your palette here. Just come back in. See, let's fade that a little bit. Let's get a little white in there. White's the most difficult pigment next to yellow. Your white oil paint, zoom out. That white oil paint will dry pretty fast. Uh, unfortunately, you'll have to refill the palette sometimes. So some of these other colors will stay juicy for a while, but the, the whites, um, due to the nature of the pigment. Just do a little, let's, we're gonna fade this a little bit, and really push that color. So it looks like I'm putting a lot of color down. I am putting a fair amount down. We're gonna push this fade. Come back in here, dab that up. Again, sorry for bumping the camera and all sorts of So there, I'm trying to push that as kind of a really faded. And see how I went? There you go, you can kind of see that. My old tweezers, I gotta beat those up. Some of the stuff is old as I am. You can just see I, I, I kept off the edge of that. There's there's the panel line, there's the edge of the panel, there's a little bit of a worn chipped area, and then there you go. So because that's the upper calf muscle, so that's that the, the shape of this thing, this is gonna hit the, you know, that's almost that's almost horizontal. So it's gonna it's a great spot for fading. That whole thing. So yeah, you can see that actually didn't turn out half bad. Now what if I wanted to do a similar fade over here is, I'm trying to get this at an angle, you can all see that. Oh, there we go, okay. So notice how I'm drawing that in. I'm going around the chips, just drawing that in softly, because I want this to be very precise. And I'm just dabbling on really gently. You can see there's almost no thinner on the brush. Coming around here, just kind of drawing that in a little bit. So that's, the, the bottom of the leg goes that way. So the foot's that way. So you want the, the light's gonna catch. That's what we're trying to do here. So we switch this guy in. Chipping. No wonder it wasn't working. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I pulled out too many brushes. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me reset this guy. Hold on one second. Okay, so reset the blending brush. You have to do this occasionally. So I've dipped it in the thinner. You can see that's nice and juicy. I load that. Tap that out. You want to really get that dry. 
Yeah, you want almost no glint on your skin. I'm trying to do this upside down a little bit. So we'll it's still slightly too wet. Sometimes you're gonna fight it a little bit, but knowing what to do to it to fix it is is half the pro is half the battle, whatever they say. Soften those up. So I probably pulled too much color off of that. Which is no problem. Come back in. Get rid of this guy for sure. So this is just me building up that little corner. strong because what's going to happen is when this is standing up neutral yeah those little spots didn't work out too well that's okay if you didn't like something it's fairly easy to get that off of there tip because the tip is getting a little bit splayed. So one of the things I'm constantly doing is you can just see it in the blurry section there is I'm always rolling that tip back sharp as I unload it. So again, that's what the brush looked like there. Fairly dry, decently sharp tip. So I come in, I just want to do a little bit of dabbing down here. Like I need to get in the rhythm, I can tell. Here we go. too strong. Working with bright primary colors like this in this kind of world is a little bit different. It's really easy to overdo stuff. So that's just kind of tinting. There's there's some panel line wash in there, but see how it's slightly inconsistent? See how there's there's this slight inconsistency with the panel line there? I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Zoom back in. Yeah, because what you can do. Do I miss anybody's cut? Can't read Cyrillic, my friend. Panzerwaffe, English if you can, brother. Or is it Greek or Cyrillic? <laughs> Are you guys talking between yourselves? That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, don't spam the chat, Panzerwaffe, dude. Don't, please don't spam the chat. Jesus Christ, bro. Yeah. Yeah, please don't spam the chat, because I'll probably just you know, have to do this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That cleaned up. Sorry, guys. Um, Panzermeister36, hello. Artem, what's up? Yeah, please use English if you can. Cyrillic, Greek, all that stuff, and don't spam the chat, because, yeah, you'll just be booted. What's up, Will? There he is. Yeah, we'll do all that. Streaks are easy. In fact, I was just about to do one. So if you're still there, 
Where, there it is. Hold on, I have the wrong brush. Okay, hold on. Gotta, get, gotta walk, or gotta, what is it? You gotta walk before you can run? Yeah, I've got a little bit of a mess here. Okay, so hold on one sec here. I need a clean brush and a street brush. Let me clean one of these off real quick. Hold on, guys. So I'm gonna reset a sharp blending brush, which is which is gonna be one of these little dudes. And then we've got my little, we did a streak earlier. Well, I don't know when you hopped in the stream. Um, so I was doing some streaking up in here and then I went back in and you can see on the, on the replay later on how I did that. That's one way to do it. So let's do, dun, dun, dun. let's see what the color is here. So almost a navy blue brown. Well, I'm just fucking with colors here. Let's put the tone. Again, I don't use pure colors too much. I don't use a lot of pure white or pure black. Okay, so let's see here. So there was a little nub in here. Let's do a streak off that joint. Okay. Yeah, the camera shakes a little rough. Sorry for that. Again, that's why we're doing this test session. Okay, so you can see I've got You just see the shine. There's, it's a little wet, which is fine. Let's brush for a sec. Okay, hold on a sec here. My hands in the way. Sorry. I'm just wiping the blending brush out a little bit on the. On the okay, so you pull from the bottom of that. Pull that down. See how I've left the top part up there. Pull it down. So I got the rake flat brush here. Because what I'm going to do is that diffuses anything, any color I've pulled down into here, you don't want too much. So hold on a sec as it's drying fast on me. I have to go quick. Now to soften that that out a little bit. And just like everything else, oftentimes this isn't a one and done conversation. I almost can just blow dry that a little bit. There it goes. Okay, so so that's kind of round one a little bit here. Let's tighten up the top. Pull that in a little bit. Just make sure that's in focus. It's tough between the glare of everything. Getting a little bit of heavy spots up there. Pull that down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I've pulled a little bit more. You want a little bit more diffusion down here. Almost to where it looks like it just disappears into infinity. You don't really see the end of it. You don't really want to ever see the end of your streaks. It just kind of ends. It's hard to describe that properly. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm going alongside it and tighten that streak up and then diffusing it out some more. So I'll see how the brush goes slight to the right and then slight to the left, slight to the right, to the left. What was that movie from? <laughs> so this is me tighten that streak up. I'm not touch, I'm going to the edge of the streak and pushing into the middle of the streak and then pulling it down to the right and a little bit to the left. Cause it's gonna splay out towards the bottom of that curvature. And this could be the side of a Sherman. This could be any any type of scenario like that. Let's see. So I pulled that pretty far down, actually. So let's soften that up a little bit more. Okay. So it's, it's still a little bit too sharp. What you can do is switch the brush. You can tighten that color up at the top again. You can pull that back down a little bit. So I just pulled it down just like the first millimeter of, the, of that streak a little bit. That just kind of reinforces that top part. Now admittedly, I probably wouldn't do that off that off that thing. Getting some sunlight on that too. It's, it's yeah, it's pretty bright out there. 
This is also why I have to do the streams at certain times of day. This sun's gonna move down. It's 2, 10 p.m. now. Uh, we're gonna get some direct sun here in about an hour, so you, the light's shifted on me a little bit. I'm fighting the glare. But, yeah. So if I zoom back out, yeah, you can kind of see that kind of comes off of that. It's pretty subtle. It's a little bit intense up close. Not the best of the streaks, but that's a nice sharp one though. You know, and I wouldn't do any more than that. Sometimes the streaks tend to get too powerful for a lot of people. Um, all right. Yeah, you guys are, put you guys down. Yeah. No, it's already happening. <laughs> it's like literally the test stream. The dudes are already spamming the chat. You're like, hey, it's all right. I'll put them in timeout for now. Um, yeah, it's all right. Let me just go back up and read some of the comments here. But that's, yeah, Will, that's a quick, uh, I hope you saw that. If not, um, that's just a quick rundown on doing a streak. But yeah, you just want to get the little bit of color at the top edge, you know, just to repeat the process. You get a little bit of a dab the color where you're starting the streak at, whether, you know, here, let's, we can do one more over here. And let's do a little bit lighter tone. It's probably a little bit strong on the color too. Sometimes tone on tone works a little bit better. But let's here, let's do a little bit more of a pure rust. Yeah. What's up, Panzermeister? Let's see what else we got in there. Um, yeah, we're probably gonna have to, if you're not gonna use English, I'm probably gonna have to give you a boot. Because none of them, nobody here can read Cyrillic or Greek or whatever you're typing in. Uh, yeah, no, Mike, we're this is day one. We're gonna we're gonna be all over the place. I'll probably do one or two streams a week for sure. So yeah, this is this is this is just me having a little fun time here, and making sure everything seems to be working okay, right? I mean, more or less, this works pretty well. Um, no, plamotherapist oil dot filter is not what I do. So Taz, uh, oil paint rendering in the oil dot technique, what you guys are talking about, two completely different techniques, even though it's oil paint, they're very, very different. Uh, no, I don't, Russo, I've never used the oil brushers, uh, simply because I have 8 million tubes of oil paint and I don't need 8 million more tubes of oil paint. <laughs> it's the only reason. I don't use a lot of ammo products, basically, just simply because I've ha already had my stuff up uh, long before ammo was a company. so. Uh, since a lot of this stuff lasts a long time, there hasn't been a real reason for me to, to, and I'm also, FYI, I'm not here to use everybody's brands. So I probably won't, if I don't use your brand, don't sweat it because focus on the, the chemical type versus the label and you can do what, pretty much what I'm doing. It doesn't really matter. If there's a brand that does something special, I will mark it out when we talk about it. But between AK and ammo, they're essentially the same. So there's no real big, you know, there's, a difference between lacquers and acrylics and acrylic lacquers and, and all that bullshit we'll get to later. Um, but yeah, so that whole thing. Um, Dantone, pumped to see you do some more gunplay. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Going to do a lot. I uh, built up quite a bit. Yeah, have a good day, Mike. Um, whatever you're doing, to be safe, brother. Um, yeah, so Will, okay, good. You saw that. But yeah, there's these little... Uh, Surface details. Let's let's do another one more. We'll do one more quickie, and we'll wrap it up. Okay. So, going back through here, let me get back in camera. Pull out here so you guys can see this. Hold on a sec. There we go. Okay. So, the little thinner dudes up there. So just getting a little thinner. Let's make sure you can see that. It'll hold the camera up a little bit. So I'm loading it up. I'm getting kind of juicy. Uh, that's pretty heavy. Okay, so now we can unload, and, and I twist when I unload, so you can see. Yeah, let's. So the, you get that tip nice and precise again. Let's go zoom back in. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's that little divot off of this little mark here. Just dabbing the lower edge of that little depression there, that little divot that's in there. See that? It's just a little bit, can't get too close. Yeah, the focal link on the on the iPhone camera is a little bit short, or it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's limited, limited, yeah. It doesn't have a, a big focal between this kind of work. And I'm pushing the iPhone camera a little, little hard here. This is probably more than it was intended for. 
Okay, so I'm use I switched to the thinner brush and I'm pulling from the bottom. You can just see, yeah. Okay, you can see that. Okay, see that bristle, guys? See how it's bending right there at the base of that depression? So the, the oil colors in here, look at the brush, tip of the brush. The oil colors in there, and I'm pulling that out. Trying to get this so I can see it and you can see it. So it's mostly thinner right now. So I don't have quite enough oil on there. No big deal. Go a little bit more. So I dabbed some raw oil paint on there. This is the thinner brush again. Uh, the blender brush, sorry. Okay. And I'm trying to go slow enough so you guys can see. And my fingers kind of, pre I shouldn't be doing this, but I have to really get in here tight. Okay, so I'm pulling that oil down. You pull from the bottom of the, of the mark. The glare is a little bit, there you go. So let's set that real quick. Now if I did this right, if I did my homework right. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, there you go. So there's a soft little bleeding rush streak right off of that. And that's usually when I'm in the zone, that's about how quick it'll go. Like Will and all you guys in there. What's up, Rick? Welcome, my brother. I hope you're staying cool. I'm not sure what part Portland here, if you're working or not, but yeah, you know, you know, you know, we're going to be hurting here. Okay, so yeah, so that's just kind of a quick little, and Will, if you saw that second one, that's about what I should be doing. So it kind of zooms out of focus here. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a glare off that light. Actually, you know what? Hold on, guys. Make some noise. Hold on. Let's cut the sunshine down a little bit. So I might be, I might be a little bit blown out. Okay, there you can kind of see now as the sun is shifting. Okay. So that, there you go, That's that kind of looks pretty solid. For not working with that one and just kind of putting that streak down real quick, that's fine, dude. Yeah. Um, well, no, the, 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 the trick is, so so Will's asking about, you know, because Will's experienced, um, comes to the table with his knowledge. Okay, so let me just set this up again. All my, all my brushes are crooked. Get rid of this sable guy. This is bugging me. These sable guys are. Get those out of here. Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay. So one of the things here. Let's switch back to the turret, and let me get a little bit of a prop in here. Hold on, because I set this up at an angle. Okay. Let's see if that'll zoom in. Okay. Let's move a little bit. That might be too close. Yeah. Here, hold on, guys. Sorry. I'll just set this up. I have to go a little bit slightly to the edge of the camera. So I'm going to try to catch that. Okay. So you see the edge of that. You've got that kind of uh, flame cut edge up there, up in there. So the reason this works, Will, and it's pretty it's pretty repeatable. Um, you know, obviously, um, live demo is a thing. <laughs> kind of, you know, um, this isn't my best work. So don't judge me on this. Don't please. Um, but yeah, so because the tools are consistent, and you know, you, most of you guys know I've stuck to the number two tips and, and this kind of, you know, these, these sharper tips here. That consistency is what allows these, these to happen even under stressful circumstances. Not that I'm stressed, but this is not an ideal work setup for me. So let's, uh, let me see what I've got here for everything. And it's, and it's summertime too. So I should mention weather, humidity, temperature, all that plays a huge factor in how and how fast you can work with some of this because even with the oils this stuff will this stuff will tap out fast so there's a little air bubble thing here on the resin let's just use that as a, as a chip let me come in here so I put a little dab but you guys can see that pretty solid right this is what I mean by tiny this is what I'm talking about boys and girls get that shit tight don't fuck around with that it's always better to start this way. Start hyper small, even if you think it's never going to be seen. Trust me, you can. The eye acuity will pick up every little subtle as you walk by this stuff. So start as small as you possibly can get stuff. You can always add more. Taking away is way harder. 
It's one of the reasons, okay, so this is a good commentary. Segway real quick. Not to, not to critique or to be negative, so don't interpret that way. This isn't me being an asshole. This is me just one-to-one. -one. When you do the enamel application process that's taught to us for the last decade or so of, of streaking that all in there and then wiping that all off, you lose your control. And now the better guys can definitely can do it better for sure. But you're, you're not starting with a controlled, think like a sniper versus a machine gun. The one bullet on the target is gonna give you a better result with less effort and it's more efficient. That's where I'm trying to really go with a lot of this stuff for you guys. Granted, I'm talking and I'm interrupting myself and this is a mess, it's just whatever. But when this is working really good, like it should be if I've got the right brush here. Yes, gentlemen. Um, this is really fast. Oh, here it is. It's really fast. It's efficient. Now, speed and efficiency are two different things. Speed is just outright moving fast, but efficiently is putting that mark down and getting like that second streak on this guy was probably 20 seconds worth of work. Then I can move on. Now, I don't have to talk to you guys, but yeah. Um, yeah, see you later, Danton. Take care, bud. Yeah, me too. I'm super pumped to be here. So, back to this is. Super precise. Move too much. Let's see how wet that is. You can see that, guys. It was too wet. Back off. Dry it up a sec. Go a little bit drier. Okay, sorry for that. Okay. So that little dude's right there. Go put it down. I can blow dry that with. So it's just a hint of a streak off of there. Now, it's not the best one right now, but that's because it, it kind of dried off as I was talking. That's what happened. Yeah, usually, yeah, everything's drying on me pretty fast. Yeah, I, I've noticed that. It's, it's only 72 inside the room. It's not too bad. We're supposed to break some records with the heat this weekend. It's The hottest day in Portland is 107, and it's saying it's going to be 108 to 111. So we're not, and it's going to be pressure, high pressure cook zone. It's going to be like an oven. It's not Vegas heat. Everybody says it looks like the desert. No, dude, we're, we're so screwed this weekend. That's one of the reasons I want to get this out there. Okay, I'm actually, hold on one second, guys. I'm not getting any, this oil is dried on me. Hold on two seconds. Okay, so when this happens on the palette, let me back out because this is a little troubleshoot. Okay, so this color here, this dark, uh, the raw umber is drying so fast. So let's put some fresh, I cut through that, my own. To me, a paint stir stick. Everybody needs one. Don't dick around. Okay, come back in. Here we go. Let's get a let's get a fresh bit of raw oil. No thinner on the brush. Tighten that up a little bit. And just wipe that dude off. Come over here. Okay. Put that back in that spot. Zoom back in. Get back in focus. Focus. There we go. I'm sort of. There we go. Just a little. It gets within like half a centimeter too close and that camera just won't focus. Okay. Again, I'm talking a lot. I'm interrupting myself. I apologize. Pretend this is going smoothly. But the streak's still fine. Okay. Okay, this is my blending brush. Turn the angle so I can draw that down, right? I'm just catching that lower lip. That's a little bit too big. So I'm coming to the edge and I'm pushing into the middle of the streak and tighten that edge up a little bit. Oops, sorry. I keep bumping this little guy. Try not to be clumsy is, is a thing. Getting older too, that's not helping. Okay, so I'm still pulling it down and I'm going alongside the edge of, the, of that streak. Because this will be a prominent streak on the side of a turret. So you do want to spend some time and get this one right. Just blowing it off real quick. So let's zoom out a little bit. That actually came out pretty solid. So I turned to an air bubble primer. Let's get some, okay, let's get some light over it. Yeah. So that's probably actually, in my opinion, that's too strong. 
but the scale of it's really nice. So the color is probably too strong. Touch the screen, don't shit. Yeah, it's just there it goes. Okay, it's not a bad streak by any, any stretch of the imagination, but yeah, streaking is important because oftentimes you guys do, these are too strong. Because when you look at the real things, very very few times you get powerful streaks on active units. So that's probably a little bit better. Pull that down a little bit. But see how I'm using so little thinner here? Let's hair dry that real quick too. Yeah, so I'm using so little thinner. I'm not fighting muddiness. I'm not fighting, um, yeah. Now obviously that was one little streak on the basically blank surface, but that's not too bad. That's a nice, good one. But you can see by controlling your thinner, uh, you control the, the special effect that you're creating. And that's kind of the key takeaway here is, is the thinner is like your volume knob. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, bye bye. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. Here, we're going to block that out for now. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm getting some spam already. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably have to do mods and stuff. Yeah, but anyway, so that the, the point of that is is, is work small. Uh, that controls all the special effects. That means if you do make a mistake, it's easy to correct. Um, you know, if I've if I've applied a bunch of enamel streaking stuff all along the top of that edge and, and pulled it all down, it's it's a mess, and you're spending a lot of time cleaning that up. Um, and you're not going to get that kind of nice, precise type effect. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got everything closed up right now. I've got the AC on. Yeah, we're, we're going to try to stay cool. Um, yeah, sorry, Steve. There, there, there was glare off that other side over there that, that comes that comes onto the screen here. So, but yeah. I'm going to switch this around here. Put my mug back on screen. All right, guys. So, yeah. Yeah, Matt. So, he's asking, uh, do you always use clean thinner? Um the thinner here, let's put that out a little bit, you can kind of see. That's kind of the, the overview. So the thinner does get dirty, but the, the thinner itself uh, is, is clean enough. It, it, over a session, it'll, it'll get kind of dirty and you'll replace that, usually if it gets too bad. It, the stuff will settle down, the, the pigments and the oils will settle to the bottom of that little thing, so it, it looks darker than it is. Um, yeah, don't worry about the Russian spammers, brother, it's okay. <laughs> I got rid of them, that's fine. Um, and I don't mind if you guys are from from other countries. If you know, if you can use English, best. If you just say it, if you can't use English, so that I know that you're for real and you're not a spammer. Um, thank you, Scott. Yeah, I'm trying, brother. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of one of the things. You know, let's, whoops, as I go out of camera like an idiot. Yeah, let's see if we can. So now the light. Put the light back over here. It just catches it. Yeah. So those are good though. This is a 35th scale turret. It's it's on the larger side. It's 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 about the size of a Sherman turret. Um, that would be a strong streak, and I probably wouldn't have done it. The colors uh, on this light of a tone, and, and obviously if I'm working, I probably would. See how it's the streaks pulling all the way down onto that ledge. You've got opportunities on this ledge to do stuff, um, and also I've got a ton of greasy fingerprints on this guy. This has been a really well handled turret, and I would never touch it like this. So trust me, I'm just kind of. Um, yeah, Rosso, it's 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 this stuff, my friend. Um, this is probably the same bottle from the trip. Uh, the stuff lasts a long time. I will say that much. When when you use an odorless thinner, let's see if we get a focus over there. There it goes. So when you when you use a thinner in this manner, when you use in little bits, and this is why uh, when we talk about money, we talk about if it, you know something being cost effective, oil paints rule the roost on this one. Uh, this stuff, when you use it in this manner, uses forever. A lot, of, like I said, a lot of these tubes have been um, with me for a, a good decade now. Granted, I haven't done a lot in the last couple of years, but that's that's for other reasons. But it's not because of the oil paints or, or being used up. Some of them actually do dry up. Some of the some of the hobby brand stuff dries up pretty fast. And I don't know, uh, probably Adam's situation with Wilder. I've got my bin of Wilder on the other side and I haven't pulled them out because I'm not really sure if they're available anymore. I don't really want to use stuff that's not available either. So I will try to at least uh, use stuff. 
Yeah, so you're fine on the thinner. As long as it's an odorless thinner and it can be an art store brand. Uh, I forget, guys, if, it, if white's... I, I do need to, to brush up on terminology between the countries because I believe white spirits are the same thing. If not, don't quote me on that. I'm rusty. I'm a rusty old man. Uh, but yeah, I, I stick with odorless thinner. I try to support hobby brands as much as I can. I try not to buy art store stuff too much. And that's just because I try to keep the money in the hobby. Um, but that's that's just a general rule. I, no, you can't always follow. The hairspray, obviously, Trey's me owes me millions on residuals. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, but wrapping this stream up, go ahead and leave comments. Uh, stuff you want to see in the future. Obviously, we'll hit the big stuff soon. Uh, I might stream tomorrow, actually. Uh, we'll see how the heat goes and what it does. It might be really early West Coast time just to, because it'll be cool. I don't think the evenings are going to cool down for the next week for us, so I may not do a night stream until midway next week. Our temps are supposed to calm down uh, maybe Monday, Tuesday, but they're still in the high 90s for us. It's not going to be fun. Uh, high pressure heat's the worst of all of it, so we'll see. Well, hopefully the power grid holds up. If we die, we die. You know, this is the only stream. There you go. You got enough to live off of uh, for a while. But yeah, control precision. Um, keep the brush tips sharp. Uh, you can see that's that's just on that napkin, on that paper towel there. That's that's just from this quick little session, more or less. So, a um, lot of fun. Getting hairs. Uh, yeah. So some of my demo pieces are a little bit old. I still have the T34. I'll bust out the T34. We'll do pigments. Yeah, I forgot about that. I know we'll get into pigments. Are going to be a mess. So we got all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Anything else? Uh, let's see any other good comments. Yeah, catch y'all later. Sweaty balls, right? I love some of the names you guys use. Yeah. Uh, come here, time to build as I'm working on my house. Yeah, no, I know some of you guys are going to be busy. Uh, Lorenzo Sosby book is my Bible. I'm reprinting the Sosby book, so uh, very cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, stay cool, Rick. If you come back around, keep up the good stuff. Yeah, we do need to, I stand to hang out, Rick. We need to get some coffee and catch up. Uh, we got some mutual friends. But Rick Lawler, you guys, is uh, also Portland-based, uh, but we actually don't interact quite a bit. I've been I've been a hermit with you know the whole COVID conversation, but before that, I just haven't really been around too much. Um, yeah, George Canera said thanks for the heads up on the glass file. Yeah, we'll we'll get into we'll get into tools and new tools. Um, military guys, historical guys, train guys. A lot of stuff happens in in the gunplot world, especially development in terms of product. Uh, and I'm pretty well tapped into that now, so I will share as much as I can because a lot of it's crossover. So that's a big deal. Um, yeah, I, I, you know what, Jay? They're that cabinet over there in the kitchen. Uh, I will bust out one of the stocks you sent me uh, and I'll put it on the bench. Yep. So, yeah, Gary, you're welcome. 17 degrees in UK. Yeah, jealous, brother. Uh, usually Portland, we're mellow. But yeah, Canada, you fucked us. Um, yeah, no worries, Will. I appreciate it. Good to see you around. Uh, good questions. I, I appreciate those from a lot of you guys that are experienced. Uh, it's tough because I don't ever write for beginner or advanced. And I think a lot of you guys know that. Uh, but I know with the, with the digital world and the mix of all the genres happening, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of kids around. I do curse, try to keep the chat PG-13 is somewhat... <laughs> So there are some kids coming in, which is great because we uh, none of us are, we're all, this is 50 year old gray and I know you guys are older than me. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have a good mix of stuff. Uh, I do have my Hawker Tempest test piece around here somewhere. I pulled that out too, but I'll, I'll, we'll do some new stuff. We've got a lot of new stuff coming, um, especially with the, with the, with the Gunpla stuff, but they're good to work on because they, they, they have all the surface details and they're easy to handle. You know, sometimes dealing with the big stuff is a little bit cumbersome, especially with just the brushwork. I just want to show you guys, you know, just just what I'm doing with this for now. So I'll keep the big picture stuff for later on when we develop the, the videos a little bit further. But this is day one. Thank you for all hanging out. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Peace.